Shalom, Grand Rising, Oseo, Helito. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the video. I'm your brother Daniela, aka the Capricola Aboriginal. In the name of Yahweh Shai, first and foremost, I'm going to give all honor to the power, the God of Israel, the power of my forefathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the power, our power, right? I also want to give recognition to the Holy Spirit and recognition to Yahweh Shai. Salute to all you brothers and sisters who keep the will of our Heavenly Father, who is the power of Israel, the God of Israel, to the best of your ability especially in these times. So, I'm over here looking right now. Look at that gas prices. Yeah, they're still crazy. And a lot of you guys are really <laughs> blessed in a sense that, you know, uh, y'all don't have to pay the type of gas that I'm paying. I'm paying a lot for gas. You know, some of you guys are paying like $2.89 for gas. Some are paying more than that. Some of y'all are paying like around $3. I'm paying about $3.5 for a gallon. A nine-tenths of a gallon, shall I say, because everybody believes that you get a gallon. No, you actually get nine-tenths of a gallon, <laughs> which is 90% of a tank of gas. I mean, 90% of a gallon of gas. So, yeah. I know that on the East Coast, from like New York, Maine, all the way down to like Louisiana, Florida, I know that they have a gas shortage to where they literally are running out of gas. And it's like a state of emergency in certain states like Virginia. They have a state of emergency going on. And uh, you got a couple other states that are also running a state of emergency, I believe, because of the fuel shortage. Now, this could be 2.0 of this whole shutdown and stuff like that, because this is, I, it is a crisis. You know, you're going to have a lot of people who won't be able to go to work. Um, and when people don't go to work, society is at a standstill. So it's kind of like last year all over again when we had to shut down, you know, and people weren't going to work. So this is going to kill businesses even more. And that's all that this is. It's just 2.0 of killing the American economy or at least stifling it and even doing a slow kill if it's not a quick kill. Um, and I just really hope that you guys are aware of this and are preparing you know preparing because i could guarantee you this when gas prices go up and they go up for a long time and people aren't able to buy fuel for their vehicles you know even for trucks that means there's going to be less trucks on the road that means there's going to be a scarcity of supplies and you know that means prices going to drop go up inflation is going to go through the roof if this persists because we see with the fuel and the fuel is just a precursor so you know it's a domino effect guys so get prepared um, get yourself some more water get yourself some more foods I'm definitely gonna be doing that um, I mean I got a lot <laughs> we me and my wife we got a lot like it's ridiculous how much we have just for us it being us too you know um, well, two, not necessarily a half, because the good news is that, um, my pregnant, my wife is pregnant, so we, you know, we're hoping to have a little one, you know, by next February, but, you know, I would love for it not to be in this society, I hate this society, <laughs> I'm one of those people, one of those preppers who don't prep and hopes that society, you know, regains itself. I'm one of those people who prep and hope that this damn thing falls and 
that I can be sustained outside of society or outside of a society ran by these these evil people. But um, yeah, so yeah, guys, prepare. Definitely prepare. Don't just buy fuel. Don't just buy fuel. Buy yourself food. Buy yourself water. If you guys have bikes, buy yourself bikes. And the reason why I say that is because those are great bug out tools. They're great for transportation. I mean, you can literally travel over 100 miles in one day with a bike. You can travel, I believe, most humans, I believe you can travel to like 20 miles in one day on foot. But you can do easily over 100 miles by bike. Okay? Um, me and my dad, we used to ride bikes uh, quite often while I was in high school. I used to do it for my training and just even for pleasure. And um, we used to do like 20 miles in one day. I mean, not even one day, just like in probably about four hours of biking, about 20 miles. Easy. And mind you, that's with, you know, taking breaks and stopping and, you know, hanging out at a park for a while and stuff like that, right? But you can you can easily ride a bike over 20 miles without stopping. Like, it's, it's easy. Bikes are one of those type of exercise um, things that you can do and you don't really need to rest. You don't have to get off of it to, or you don't have to stop to rest. You can rest while riding. You know, and the average person on a bike rides from 20 to 30 miles, even up to like 40 miles per hour, depending on what type of bike you have. Easy. You know what I'm saying? So that's travel. And I think bikes are great for bugging out. That's why I, you know, my wife and I, we have bikes. And I will recommend you guys for bugging out purposes to get yourself mountain bikes. Do not get road bikes. You know, bikes that have skinny tires and are made for, you know, riding on the road. Those aren't the type of bikes that you want. You want mountain bikes because you may have to get into a situation where you, you go off road and those road bikes are no good off road um, and and it's not just the tired guys it's, it's it also has to do with the suspension system the shock absorbers that are on mountain bikes road bikes don't have shock absorbers um, but they do have hybrid bikes that are like a cross between mountain bikes and road bikes um, but definitely definitely get you a mountain bike if you can, because those are going to be great for you when you're trying to bug out, especially if you have to go through the wilderness with those bikes. Um, I'm also going to build a cart for my wife and myself so that we can take stuff with us, so we can make like a little trailer to take with us while we're, you know, bugging out. Um, so yeah, but anyways. And other news outside of prepping, um, again, I just want to say this before I, you know, jump to the next topic, but guys, please prep and don't just prep, you know, with the physical things you need, but also prep spiritually, you know, get yourself spiritually ready for these things that are to come. But yeah, so in other news, um, <laughs> there's news that came out that the Proud Boys, okay, with all this Asian hate going on, right, supposedly started by Trump and his supporters, big supporters of Trump is the Proud Boys, right? Well, supposedly that spurred Asian hate, but yet black people over the past, like, what, several months have become the face of Asian hate for some reason. Even though Asians beat the shit out of our women and have been doing that for decades and have discriminated against our people, so much so that it even shows up in movies <laughs> and they do it in humorous ways in the movies just to show the type of hate that we get from Asians. Even though we are the biggest supporter of Asian businesses, black people go to Chinese foods more than any other race does, even more than Chinese people do. Most of the Chinese food spots are in black neighborhoods, okay? 
most of the Korean owned hair stores, you know, uh, Korean owned nail salons, Chinese owned nail salons, where are they at? They're in black neighborhoods, right? Most of the clientele are so called black people. Yet, we hate Asians because of a few, probably, possibly real attacks and a few. <laughs> possibly fake attacks a lot of those look staged a lot of those dudes look like fucking crisis actors i'm not gonna lie i agree with Tariq on that man a lot of them look like crisis actors i know what crisis actors are i've been yeah I, I've, I've known about them for probably about man i want to say i've known about them for probably over 20 years now i mean i said 20 years I've known about them for probably over 10 years now, Crisis Actors. I remember learning about them like all the way back in like 20, 2012, something like that. Uh, <laughs> it's been a long time. Actually, like 2000 and, I'll say 2009, 2010. Because when I first ever seen a video talking about Crisis Actors, um, and it was around, yeah, around that time when conspiracy theories was like kind of blowing up on the scene cult, you know, videos about the cult and stuff like that, so yeah, I've known about it for a long time, and those dudes that be knocking them out like fucking crisis actors man, and, you know, also they're foreign black people, they're not you know, what, what Tariq calls FBA, foundational black Americans which are, you know, Americans who've families been here since the beginning okay <laughs> let's get that straight but, um yeah, I mean, it's, it's, oh, okay, ooh, okay, I see you got it wrapped, that looked nice. Sorry, I'm looking at my neighbor's car. But yeah, so, you know, supposedly all this Asian hate, black people are the face of Asian hate, right? Like, just trying to get the focus off of white people. Well, come to find out that the Proud Boys, their biggest sponsor, are Chinese Americans. <laughs> see, I'm telling you, man. We all we we we're all we got, man. You know, um, I'm talking about Black Americans. We are really all we got. Um, I know that you know. In the Hebrews like community, they teach that Hispanics and all that stuff are our people. Yeah, you do have some Hispanics who are our people, right? And I'm not just talking about the black, the ones that look Negro. I'm talking about the ones who look mixed. Okay, some of them are our people, but. What we have to do is we still have to be careful with that. Why? We can't just outwardly graft in the whole Latino community and say, hey, you know, there are people. Why? Because not all of them are our people. And not all of, all of them are our people spiritually, as in the sense of being an Israelite. And not all of them are our people in the sense of mentality, mentality wise, right? Even the ones who are our people mentally, I mean, who are our people spiritually. You know, mentally, they think they're a white person. Mentally, they think they're a Spaniard and all of this, right? So you have to be careful with that. That's why I say right now, since we're here, let's just only deal with our people since we're in this society. Because other than that, if we trust all these other people, they're going to screw us. You know, we've been the biggest supporter of Asian people for the longest. We're the reason why their movies blew up. And became so popular. We're the reason why Kung Fu movies blew up. You know. We were such a big proponent of theirs. That we even had spin up spin offs of, of our own. You know what I'm saying? Where we made our own Kung Fu movies. You know. Even though they were. Um, like. I don't want to say satire. But what was the other word for it? Satire deals with. Uh, you know. Deals in the political world. While. The word I'm looking for is basically when you're you take something and you make it humorous whatever can't even think of the word right now but yeah i mean it's just so funny black people the you know we're the face of asian hate yet yeah, we're not the ones who went and bombed japan we didn't bomb those two cities we didn't bomb hiroshima and nagasaki i mean was it nagi nagasaka i can't Nag nagasaki then that's what's called we didn't bomb those cities. White people did. A white country did. A white ran country did. Okay? 
We didn't do that shit. They did. We didn't go over. We weren't the ones who made the decisions of going over to Vietnam and killing those people. They forced us to. Most of the black men that were over there in Vietnam were drafted to do that. We we didn't have white people. I mean, we didn't have black people sitting all the way up at the top making all these decisions on going to kill your people over there. And then the same thing with Cambodia. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't come up with that. Same thing with the Korean War. We didn't. We didn't do that. That was white people. Yet we're the face of Asian hate. We didn't throw Japanese people in concentration camps. You know what I'm saying? We didn't. We didn't do none of that. Yet we're the face of Asian hate. That's because white people always de- want to deflect and take the the spotlight off spotlight off of them and then put it on everyone else, especially us. You know. And then you have you know Asian people who are just the biggest coons in the world. Man, I'm sorry, Asians are some of the biggest sellouts in the world, and I mean that. I mean, look at it. White people fucking hate them. Yeah, white people will let them come in and be honorary white people just for their benefit until it's no longer good for them. Um, but look, white people fucking hate them, yet they're donating to a, a group that hates them, supposedly. And that's because they're really working together, man. They're really working together. Especially here in this country, they're working together. Um, but when you look at most of... When you look at... Most Asian Americans, most of them marry non-Asian people. Most of them marry white. Majority of them marry white. <laughs> it's crazy. When you look at the statistics, like 90% of their women marry white men. That's how big of sellouts and coons they are. So it's no surprise to me that they have so much hate for us. Because they want to be just like these Edomites. They want to be just like these so-called white people. You know, it's just crazy. Very crazy. But yeah, I just thought that was funny. That, you know, the biggest donators to the Proud Boys were white. I mean, sorry, were Chinese Americans. It's crazy. (laughs) It's crazy. They're just showing their allegiance. But their allegiance has no power in reality. Why? Because the Most High is going to destroy them. And there's nothing they can do about it. Anyways, take care. Peace out. Shalom. Yahweh bless.